Hello students, uh, let's continue our discussion in input and uh, interaction. The next topic is uh, features of the interactive program. Yesterday in the last session, uh, we were talking about the features of, uh, we were talking about the design of the inter uh, building interactive model, uh, right, by considering that uh, square, rotating square example we have taken. So this is the continuation part of that. Now we are uh, going to discuss about the features of a Good, good, good interactive model. The first one, it should have a, a smooth display showing neither flicker nor any artifacts of the refresh process. Uh, basic thing, very basic requirement. Since uh, we are talking about the interactive model, the animated one, there should not be any flickering while displaying the model. Uh, then second point mentioned a variety of uh, interactive de devices on the display to be uh, mentioned. Then a variety of methods for entering and displaying the information, variety of methods for entering and displaying the information like mouse, keyboard, menu and so on. Uh, an easy to use interface that does not require a substantial effort to learn, right? An easy to understand, easily understandable interface should be developed. Then feedback to the user, user feedback to be provided that option to be provided tolerance it should provide the feedback to the user then uh, fault tolerance should be handled tolerance for the user errors the, a design that uh, incorporates the consideration of both the visual and motor properties of the human that incorporates both visual property as well as motor property motor property in the sense uh, pointing device see pointing device it can be moved at any location the cursor can be moved any location on the screen right so your uh, model should should allow for that uh, use of a mouse or pointing device either it can be pointing device or keyboard whatever uh, the events generated from such type of hardware devices we consider as the motor property okay next topic is about the toolkit widgets and uh, frame buffer uh, the following two examples illustrate the limitation of geometric rendering, okay. Um, limitation of the geometric rendering. The first one in that is about the pop-up menu. The limitations in the pop-up menu. Observe this uh, statement carefully. When a menu callback is invoked, the menu appears over whatever the model you are displaying on the monitor. After we make our selection, the menu disappears and the screen is restored to the previous state. You must have seen this with respect to our lab experiment. Whenever you click on a right mouse button or left mouse button, for which mouse button you have implemented the menu, a pop-up menu will be displayed on top of the model itself. Isn't it? And once the after menu selection is done, a screen will be restored. The pop-up menu will disappear right so we will we are not uh, mentioned we are we are not displaying the menu throughout the program instead we have uh, included that mouse uh, sorry menu interface to some of the buttons of the mouse whenever you generate the event that particular instance only the mouse uh, sorry the menu will be appear on top of the output window and soon it will be disappear once the action is taken that is one of the limitation. Then uh, second limitation is about uh, rubber banding. Rubber, rubber banding is nothing but the elastic nature. See, it is a technique used to define an elastic nature of the pointing device to draw the primitive. Um, suppose you want to draw a curve in a paint application. You take the paint application, right? You can uh, draw the curve by uh, with the help of the mouse. Just uh, take that to go to that tool. Okay, go to the line style. After that, you uh, make a, a click of the left mouse button from there you drag the mouse from there you drag the mouse once you release the mouse what will happen a curve or that line structure will be drawn isn't it so uh, this needs some additional effort in OpenGL okay this is also one of the limitation it is said we cannot uh, easily uh, draw the curves as per our previous discussion isn't it line segments can be easily drawn because we have some built-in function but to curve it is difficult right so in the next chapters we are going to discuss much about the 
curves how to implement the curve and all okay different uh, kinds of curves or categories of curves are available that we have to see later on so you can uh, go through the definition here rubber bending begin when mouse button is pressed and continue until the mouse button is released at the time of final line segment is drawn we cannot implement this sequence of operation using only what we have presented so far right just go through this description okay fine uh, <clears throat> kind of that uh, continuous line segment a kind of rubber bending we can simulate with the help of the logic operation that is what we are going to discuss as the next concept okay so just concentrate over here which i am pointing hope it is visible right yeah logic operation two types of functions that defines the writing mode writing in the sense we are going to update the contents of the frame buffer we are going to update the pixels in the frame buffer so uh, that can be done by considering following two operations two types of writing modes one is called as the replacement mode and other one is called as the XOR mode or exclusive or mode okay just go through the next statements when a program specifies about visible primitive then OpenGL renders it into set of color pixels and stores it in a drawing buffer please, please recall the buffering concept right normally a frame buffer will be having two types of separate units in it one is a drawing other one is the rendering buffer rendering buffer is used for display purpose what is to be brought onto the display whereas drawing buffer what will be displayed onto the screen in the next interval that is decided by the drawing buffer so drawing buffer which will be storing the color pixels okay so <coughs> In case of a default mode, consider we start with a color buffer then has been clear to black. Okay, this is what initialization. Later we draw a blue color rectangle of size 10. Fine. Uh, that coding part is not visible. I will change the view better. Fine. Here you can uh, see the diagram. Hope the diagram is visible here. So, the exact meaning of uh, logic operation, okay, hope this uh, diagram is visible, if you have any doubt, uh, you can ask me either in the comment section or in the WhatsApp group, okay. So, what happens is, initially, the drawing buffer, all the pixels will be having the same value, let it be black or white, whatever, we are going to update the contents of the frame buffer, it is something like, so, for the first time, um, what happens, the blackboard, nothing will be there on the blackboard, the entire board will be empty, isn't it? We are going to write the content with the help of white chalk or color chalk, whatever. Only that particular area, we are going to update the content, the rest all remains same. This is something like this, okay? Something similar to the same concept in the real world scenario. We are going to update the contents on the blackboard with the help of different colored chalk, isn't it? Here, uh, you have to assume the same scenario with respect to the um, drawing buffer, saying some of the pixels, some of the areas, okay, all initially all the pixels will be having a same color, let it be black, then you are choosing a particular area and identifying the set of pixels, you are updating its color value, so that uh, information can uh, could be visible over the screen, okay. So, you have to choose the source pixel first, fine, perform the logic operation, this uh, logic gate, just for the sake of uh, uh, convenience, we have taken an AND gate over here, actually we are performing XOR operation and all, okay, let it be, it, sim it symbolizes the uh, logic gate, okay, then uh, a source pixel and red pixel, okay, fine. Uh, we are performing the logical operation with respect to the source pixel. Source pixel is what the color you have chosen and red pixel is nothing but the default color value in the particular area. For example, you want to write using uh, blue color chalk. Okay, source will be your blue color that blue pixel and uh, red pixel will be what 
the initial value that is black. So logical operation will be performed and result of that logical operation will be kept in the color buffer and the result of that operation is called as the destination pixel. Please understand source pixel followed by the initial value default value that is the red pixel okay logical operation will be performed between them for color manipulation will be done in the particular area and destination pixel it is called as and it will be stored in the frame buffer that is color buffer okay one and the same fine next time if you want to update the same what you have to do what you have to do see the destination pixel again if you want to update the particular area what will happen you have to access the content from color buffer only choose the this time source pixel source value may be different thing isn't it it can be anything uh, choose that may be of different color now destination you have selected as the blue isn't it read that that will be the that blue pixel will be the red pixel and source pixel will be the maybe the uh, different colored one go for the same logical operation perform the logical operation and uh, destination identify the uh, obtain the destination pixel and save it in the uh, save it in the same location fine this is this model is called as pixel writing model okay uh, same thing is explained over here i have already and the mode is called as just try to understand the mode is called as copy and replacement mode okay copy and replacement this mode of operation is called as copy mode or replacement mode you are copying the new value that is the source value into the particular location or if you want to change any time you are going to replace it with the new value please try to understand the concept okay uh, yeah at the explanation about the source pixel and destination pixels are mentioned over here as you can see hope it is uh, visible now and just now i have explained the meaning of source pixel as well as destination pixel just to go through the explanation what i what i have given okay watch the video again if you have any doubt the exclusive or or xor mode in the xor mode the corresponding bits in uh, each pixel are combined using xor logical operation okay in case of xor mode uh, how to denote the logical operation see uh, we to denote the logical <coughs> operation we can denote the new destination as d dash and see here d dash how to obtain d dash pixel destination new destination is obtained by considering red pixel plus so in xor with source pixel so red pixel is the previous value of the color buffer that is marked as d just concentrate on this uh, thing what i have highlighted this formula d dash which is equal to d xor with s okay d xor with x because why why just check the diagram you will understand why it is see here new destination consider this destination pixel as d dash how d dash is obtained consider this as the xor operation now this logical this just symbolize the logical operation let it be xor okay uh, source pixel let uh, let the source pixel is denoted as s and red pixel red pixel in the sense the previous value what is stored in the color buffer previous destination value mark it as d so d xor with s what what is the answer answer is new destination pixel that is d dash that is what given in the formula what i have highlighted isn't it and <clears throat> go through the next statement one uh, special property of xor operation is if we apply it twice okay it is something like uh, minus of minus will give you plus right so what happens is one special property of xor is, is nothing but if you apply it twice it returns the original state how minus of minus will give you the original state that positive value in the same way xor of xor will give you the initial value so that is what they are explaining so <coughs> if you xor with the d 
XOR with S, what, what it gives? It gives a D dash, isn't it? Again, if you perform the XOR operation with source pixel, same source pixel, it will give you back to give, give back the value of D. That is what explained in the formula. Okay. XOR of XOR operation will give the original state of the pixel. That is what explained here, which I have highlighted the formula. Fine. Go through the next statement. OpenGL supports all 16 logic modes. Okay, copy mode, GL copy is the default default mode. So different types of types of logic operation, 16 different types of logical operations it supports for like addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and so on, left shift to whatever. 16 digital digital oh, sorry uh, logic modes it supports for, and the default operation is the operation what we have discussed so far that is called as copy operation or replacement operation. Okay, GL underscore copy is the parameter we are supposed to use uh, okay to have this uh, mode in OpenGL whenever you want to use this mode you have to use the parameter built in parameter GL underscore copy fine to change the mode we must enable the log logic operation fine GL enable we have to also use the uh, built in model uh, sorry built in uh, function GL enable okay GL color logic operation this lets all the pixels in the frame buffers be updatable okay this lets all the pixels to be updatable so we can go for copy mode or replacement mode or whatever the logic operation you want to perform you have to enable it fine then it can be changed to the xor mode you can change the logic operation to xor mode okay with the help of the statement that is the function call all our functions only gl enable is a function gl logic op is a function which signifies the gl logical logic operation there are 16 different operations available it can be copy replacement or xor whatever so we can change it to xor mode with the help of the statement gl underscore xor okay Fine. Here is an uh, example given drawing a erasable line. Okay. One way to draw the erasable line. Now, by considering all these things, that is uh, our uh, logic operation, the erasable lines we are going to draw in with the help of OpenGL functions. Let us see how to do this by considering a small programming segment. And not considering the entire program it's a small uh, snippet we are considering one way to draw the erasable line is uh, given below here mouse is used to get the first end point and store this in object coordinates mouse is used to get the first end point Oop, this is visible let the first end point be xm and ym its value is obtained by considering the relative position on the coordinate let it have 500 and 500 points on the screen so the xm the first point randomly taken as x by 500 and ym is 500 minus y divided by 500 this is the formula we are using to get the first point on the screen okay Again, mouse is used to get the second point and draw a line segment by considering the XOR mode. Okay, let the second point be XMM and YMM. Fine, XMM and YMM. Again, we are using the same formula. Let it be X by 500 and 500 minus Y by 500 as you can see. Then use the logic operation. Which logic operation you are using? Uh, as per the discussion our previous discussion we are using the XOR operation now GL begin of course you are going to draw the line segment between two endpoints two end, end points will be having a random value please try to understand that a random value over the screen of 500 and 500 pixels horizontally and vertically how they are defined let the first is defined as X consider first uh, pair of values as xm and ym second as xmm ymm ymm we have used the same formula that is x divided by 500 okay x divided by 500 gives the relative positioning then y 
divided by sorry 500 minus y divided by 500 is the formula we are using same formula is used even for the you can see the even for the second end point locations will be different only uh, this is this will because value of x depends on the uh, point that uh, on the depends on the location uh, you have of the cursor okay that depends on the pointer or mouse so you are going to draw the line segment with the help of the um, function gl begin okay use the built in parameter gl lines um, since two end points you have to specify gl vertex to have two dimensional coordinate system we have taken xm and ym you mention xmm and ymm you mention then perform the logic operation gl copy fine and terminate okay using uh, gl end function so here in the above coding segment copy mode is used to switch back in order to draw the other object in normal mode okay if we enter another point with the mouse we first draw line in xor mode from first point to second point and uh, draw second line using first point to current point okay uh, we can uh, further see the concept how to draw the line segments continuously that is if we enter another point with the mouse we first draw the line in xor mode that is from first point to second point then second line segment is drawn from the first point to the current entered point as follows please try to understand this how first point to here here i'll try to draw that over here okay fine uh, please try to understand try, concentrate on the point see this is the first point okay first point this is the second point so first to second you are drawing a line segment here then later on what you are trying to do you are finding a new point somewhere here so line segment should be drawn from first point to newly entered point is it visible hope it is visible concentrate on the pointing device right fine it's not letting me to draw over here uh, let it be if you have any doubt you ask otherwise i'll be uh, sharing the screenshot of this by considering first point to second point and first point to third point try to understand so this is done or it is implemented as follows so use the logic operation gl logic op followed by gl xor and uh, gl begin gl lines fine as usual uh, so xor operation is used between first two points that is xm ym xmm and ymm okay then new point this is between first two points we have already defined it earlier right the new point where new point is defined now let the new point be again xmm and ymm let it be let us take it as xmm and ymm again if you want to rename you can take xmm2 and ymm2 use the same formula because the position of the pointer will be different since you are moving the try to understand you are moving the cursor somewhere else in the new area you want to draw the line segment from first end point to the uh, third end point second end point you have taken already uh, in the scenario number one earlier the coding we have considered right their uh, relative positioning was defined as again x by, by 500 500 minus y by 500 use the same formula to find the relative position of the new point on the cursor or on the screen fine xmm use the yeah we have used the same formula as you can see x by 500 500 minus 5 by 500 so uh, draw the line or initial point will be same that is xm ym new point again we have defined as xmm ymm if you want you can rename it as xmm2 and ymm2 in that case it will be xmm2 and ymm2 okay fine terminate that then for the other uh, pixels keep the gel copy mode only fine 
this will be the final form of the code same thing is uh, mentioned once again okay fine uh, the entire coding part however it is uh, a, um, just go through this coding part the things what we have discussed so far it is given once again over here okay the callbacks and all since uh, you have to register the mouse callback because mouse implementation you are doing you are providing the input through the mouse since uh, um, you want to draw the line segment with the help of mouse so um, you have to have the callback register callback should be registered in in the main function mouse glut mouse function apart from that uh, movement of the mouse is also required the motor property is also recorded so one more callback please remember so far we did not use it for the first time we are using let motion function is required you have to make a callback even for the motion function so a small coding part for mouse as well as for move that is motion function is uh, given here uh, in the pdf what i have shared okay if you want i can share the screenshot of these contents once again in the whatsapp group if you have any doubt you ask thank you for watching